you so much for joining the panel. The huge thank you to our panelists, huge thank you for the audience members. We appreciate um, just the continued support and the lovely and humbling messages people have been sending. Um, we did this because we wanted to create community in a very unique time in our history, um, both as a country and globally and as a music community. Um, and I think we're doing that. So we appreciate everyone's support uh, on the panelist side and the audience side. Um, once again, for those of you who haven't turned in though um, before, um, feel free to join our Slack group, sign up for our email, uh, email list if you're interested in staying in tune for more of the panel and Q&A wider. Um, today's panel is themed Latin music that was co-curated by Ben Tishker. Um, and if you have any questions throughout the panel, please post them in the Q&A section. We're going to get to the last 10 minutes. Uh, of answering them. Also, we're going to be posting polls throughout this panel, so feel free to answer them and just engage with the audience. Also, too, if you want a good shout out on Instagram, uh, post your Instagram handles in the chat and just continue to build community that way. Uh, but nonetheless, Ben, I'm going to pass it over to you. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks. Uh, should I introduce everybody? Please do. Uh, okay, so um, when uh, I'm Ben, um, I work uh, with Mark Jordan and Sherman, and we manage Becky G, who's on this chat. And when Becky was uh, nice enough to take this gringo on the Latin ride uh, five years ago, um, everyone on this chat has been an amazing partner for us in helping us get to where we are today. So um, Nir used to be with us at Sony and is now at Interscope and is one of the big reasons why we're here. Uh, you know, Becky and I. Rebecca, we've known for a very long time. She took us on our first tour uh, mm -hmm. with Jay Balvin and was the first, um, probably the most biggest proponent of women in the Latin music business. Uh, she waves that flag well. So um, Noah, mm -hmm. we had our first number one with, Bad Bunny and Mayores. So AJ has been, you know, a great partner at Spotify and now YouTube. Um, Lex, we've known, how long have we known each other? A long time. Like 10 years. Yeah, 10 years. He's now managing uh, one of the best artists, producers, Tiny. Um, Doris is on the, manages Kuko, who's an amazing artist. Um, Steph works at uh, Human Resources and does a lot on the Latin side. Ryan Press is like me, a gringo. Um, and so he's here to support me, which is great. Um, and Jay and uh, Troy are at Q&A. So I think we should start by, um, Nir, let's start with you. How are you handling everything with all the changes and everything going on with the coronavirus? Personally, I'm, I'm good. The family is good. Um, and the family, of course, of, you know, of the team, the artists, everybody is, uh, is um, you know, dealing with it um, in a very positive way. Um, you know, there's, there's obviously bad, there's also good in, in, this, uh, in these circumstances. It definitely makes you reflect and, uh, and get creative. So uh, we're just trying to make the best of it then. And um, you know, um, we'll, we'll, we'll get through it. We'll get through it. Yeah. Rebecca, how are you doing? Um, first of all, hello everyone. And thank you for inviting me. I think this is really great that um, you guys put this initiative together and are, you know, we're, we're, we should probably do this like without the coronavirus, right? So I'm happy that there's, those are kind of like some of the silver linings that I think are coming out of this situation. Um, obviously, you know, concerts are, are not happening. Um, it's definitely, it's definitely a big moment for all of us to figure out, you know, where we find, how we find our way. You know, I think it's gonna be interesting. I think it's personally very interesting. Aside from the tragedy that's involved, again, I'm just trying to find the positive in all of this because we could talk about all the negatives, you know, all day. But I do think there is, you know, something to be said for the fact that this is gonna be an era of substance, you know, of real substance and thing, you know, it's not just, I think, you know, for a long time, we've been living like, you know, as if like the good times were never going to end, you know what I mean? Everything was just like party music and like, you know, just felt like it kind of was like losing a lot of depth, like some of the music. And, and I feel like last yesterday I was, I was sent by, by Jake at YouTube, you know, the, the Andrea Bocelli link, you know, and I, and I, and I tuned in to watch him. It was, sing, it was amazing, you know. by the way. 
it was incredible. There was like, when I logged in, there was 2.6 million people watching him, you know, sing these prayers basically, you know, and, and it's like, it's the power of music is so important right now. It's just like, what are we going to do with it? You know? And I think that the, the people and the artists that have something more important to say, this is like their moment, you know? So I, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see kind of what comes out of this, out of this moment. I think you have one of those artists. I do. I think so too. <laughs> but I think there's a lot of them. And I'm, no, I'm excited completely. to see also that side from a lot of people that maybe we didn't know existed just because they've been kind of playing to the mainstream. And maybe now we're going to see some people, a different side of a lot of artists. So I think that's really interesting too. No, no, totally. And Becky and I talk about that all the time. How are you doing, B? Sorry, I thought I, I think I was muted. Um, I'm holding up okay. I think to kind of piggyback off of uh, what Mira was saying and what Rebecca was saying, it's an interesting time as an artist because the way we're so used to connecting with people has um, now become our only way to connect with people and that's via social media and all of like the internet-based platforms. Um, I spent the last two years of my life on the road about like 90% of the year was promo, touring, promo, touring. It wasn't my fault. Squeezing in time for, I mean, Ben knows, bless his heart. He was always, <laughs> when is there a window to get this girl in the studio? We need to make records. We're, we're touring, we're touring so much. I mean, literally we were on the road all the time. And I think especially in, in you know, in the Latin market, we know it's, it's constant. Touring is not just when you've released an album. It's, radio shows it's festivals it's your own headlining tours it's co-headlining tours so the demand for artists now in this generation has been so maximized and it's really hard for an audience now that is so used to that they're so used to having a hundred percent of us a hundred percent of the time and now we can't even leave our houses so how do we how do we give them what they're so used to having um, and, and make it mean something? Like Rebecca was saying, like, I think this is going to be such an interesting time because I know for me as an artist, there's this kind of pressure of like sink or swim. What's going to happen? Like I, just the other day I told Ben, I was like, yo, man, I've, I've, you know, been in the studio and I've watched, you know, my vocal producers, kind of vocal producers. I think it's time for me to just send me all the equipment. Like it's, it's that time. Send me a mic, send me some speakers. I'm going to download the program. I'm going to learn. That's amazing. That's amazing. Now's the time to like, what the hell, man? what the hell of it? Like I got the no. time, you know, like the truth is, is this, this is, um, an uh, international universal language. This issue that's happening is uniting and connecting everybody and the language that the whole world does speak is music. So mm -hmm. I feel a responsibility as an artist to, of course, you know, continue um, establishing kind of this, I guess this like, this level of work that I hold myself to, you know, this kind of like, um, what's it called? Like a- Standard? standard I was gonna say it in Spanish and I was trying to find it in English that's been happening a lot um and so the standard and you don't want to like you don't want to like lose that that quality I guess but at the same time it's like yo everybody else is working from their home like let's take it back to the basics let's just mm -hmm. you know let's just make videos off of our computers let's just do that yeah and I think even like when we see shows come back it's not going to be like the big productions anymore because we're not going to be able to afford it. You know, like people are going to have, there's 17 million people that filed for unemployment this week in U S you know, like, so even when shows do come back, you know, ticket prices are always so high because productions are so, you know, the scale is so huge. Mm -hmm. And I think we're going to see a real like scale back of, of shows just to be able to, you know, make something affordable for people to see. So Right. That's what I was saying. Is like it's going to be a really amazing time, Becky. I've seen you in every format. I've seen you, you know, stripped down and singing your heart out. I've seen you with the big. Stand. So I know you're going to do you're amazing in this period because you've always had something. 
you're, you've always had a big heart. You've had a, a, a you have a, like a very high conscious about things. You know, you speak about things that are important to you. And I think that that's what we're looking for right now is like artists that have that substance. I mean, listen, you're taking the time to be on this panel, you know? And I think that just, it's like, we're looking for, for leadership like that, you know, for people with a conscious, I think it's really important right now. So yeah. bravo to you for taking your, you know, your career into your hands and like recording your vocals and, you know, you're, you're, I mean, that's what we need to do right now. We all need to kind of like DIY, D -I, what, how is it, D-Y-I? No, yeah. 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 Totally. <laughs> I, I completely agree. It's, it's, like I said, it's an interesting time, but if you look Agreed. at it like that sink or swim, it's like, we've made it this far, you know what I mean? And, and yeah. we, I mean, Lord knows, I'm sure, I mean, I'm the youngest one here and I know I got stories, so I can only imagine what it feels like to like be in this situation. It's uncharted territory. It's very unfamiliar. For everyone, yeah. But just just go back to the basics. Like I said, we all came from somewhere. And to get to mm -hmm. this point, I mean, I'm sure we've all been in much, you know, pardon my friend, but shittier situations. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I just think it, it just takes adapting. We just kind of have to be kind to ourselves and, 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 and just take the time. Take the time. Definitely. What are you seeing, Dolores, from your, your crew? Everything has changed. <laughs> um, I think... I mean, we've been building this for the last three years. I mean, Kuko started in backyards in 2017, and then we flash forward to 2018, and it was first his first Coachella, and this year was supposed to be his second time playing Coachella. Like a kid from the heart of Hawthorne to make it to that place, and a South Bay I think like a lot of a lot of kids look to him for a form of representation and to know that it is possible for them, and so to think that all of the plans that we had for the first six months of this year to so be completely uprooted and shifted to the end of this year, to then the uncertainty of who knows if it's gonna be pushed into 2021. It's like, how do we recalibrate now? How do we navigate this space? How can we stand up for our community in this moment? Because obviously the music industry is hurting right now, but also like our undocumented brothers and sisters who don't have opportunities to reap the benefits of unemployment or food stamps, yet they are at the front lines of feeding our country. So I think right now it's like, how can we, as this privilege and beautiful platform that we have and access to the arts, like how can we utilize that to actually like mobilize change in this moment? Because it isn't just about our industry that's crumbled right now, it's how can we all come together in order to rebuild our whole world right now? So I think it's like all these kids that are stuck at home, whether it's in abusive households or in low-income households where they don't even know how they're gonna get their next meal, these kids are looking to art right now. So it's like, how, how can we provide that safe space for them? How can we step up in this moment? And, and that's, let me just piggyback off of that really, really quick, because Ben remembers um, when I called, I called, I was terrified what was going on, because I, I travel, I'm very, I'm Mexican-American, so I, my grandparents live literally next door to me, and they always come over, they're always in the kitchen, they always want to hang out, and I'm just thinking to myself, man, I've been traveling a lot, there's things going around, I don't want to be the cause of, hurting, you know, or being exposing anybody that is of high risk. And I called Ben, I called Mark, and we were talking. And I was like, guys, I think this is before things started being called off. I was like, we got to be the ones If they're not going to do it. Like we, we got to be the one to start canceling shows. Like, and it's a tough conversation to be put in that, you know, that situation. But for me, it was just like, take away what we do, right? The, the artist's part of it or the manager's part of it. And, the, the entertainment side of it, we're all human beings here, you know, and I, as an artist, it felt such a responsibility to kind of like, now's not the time to be like worrying about sales and tickets and numbers exactly. and how can we continue to make money? No, like people are terrified right now and they want to be seen and they want to be heard. They don't want to hear about a new song they want to know if they're going to be able to keep the lights on at their house and keep their children fed and what's going to happen next. You know what I mean? So as far as that pressure is, we, I think we all for sure agree to that fully 100%. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Noah. Question for you. We've been talking about like just kind of um, people's mental state uh, during this time and kind of, um, you know, do you feel like music could be helpful in terms of, you know, folks' mental states and giving some kind of, you know, uplift? And how do you feel about that in terms of releasing music now? 
I, I think it's great. I think it's amazing. I, like I said, I think it's just being conscious of the message that you're sharing it. It's about how, it's not about what we're saying, but how we're saying it. You know what I mean? Because we can be like, yeah, I care. But if you're like, I care, it's the intention, it's the action behind it. You know what I mean? If, if I told Mark and Ben, I'm like, well, I don't want to release any music. Then what about the fans that do listen to us that do rely on on us being that escape for them you know what i mean or that that person that they can rely on because i know for myself besides my family music is the one thing that has always been there for me and i'm somebody if we're talking about mental state i'm somebody who for many years has suffered with an anxiety disorder i recently got diagnosed with depression um last year and music has literally been life-saving music has been something that I mean, literally has gotten me through, like it's been the soundtrack to my life. And I feel like a lot of people feel the same way about music. And I think it's important to continue to provide that connection for people. Because for most, a lot of people that I know, sometimes that's all they got, you know? So I think releasing music is, is a great thing. I just think it's, it's the intention behind it and the message behind it that is what we have to be conscious about because that's where our responsibility, I think, is very heavy. Agree. Agree. Noah. Yeah. So I had a mute. What's going on? How you doing? Everything good, a day at a time. Oh, I'll tell you, my, one, of, one of my favorite activities is watching Bad Bunny's Instagram. <laughs> it, it, it's it's one of mine too i don't know what's happening and never you know it's it's it's, it's like a a second his, re his reenacting of toy story was amazing i know i know he took it real he took it real to heart you know he 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 edited it all you know he 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 went all out on it <laughs> no but how's everything everything good everything good everything good you know just saying a little bit what rebecca was saying what becky was saying and obviously what rebecca was saying um hmm. About the music part, I, 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 it's very true what Becky was saying about, you know, you can't, you know, it's not the moment to release music, but, you know, at the same time, you have people that actually want to listen to music because, you know, you have this, this balance. So, you know, I think every artist has, you know, its opportunity to release music or there's some artists that, you know, like, you know, Becky said, you know, they don't feel like they should, you know, I, I think every artist has, you know, what, 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 the, the, what they feel at the moment. Like, for example, I had an artist that called me up uh on monday last month and he says i think it's time because he's he's an r b artist in spanish and you know we there's there's no numbers there's nothing to talk about r b i'm like so why do you want to release something r b he's like no it's r b it's you know it's about you know i can't see my girlfriend i don't know where she's at you know i don't know i can't i don't know when i'm gonna see her again and i'm like oh yeah the point you know he's i need i need a this you know i need a i need i need a i need a microphone and I'm like, all right, but the only way we can do this is if you live with a producer from here on off. He's like, yeah, send them over. So he's li been living with his producer for the past, you know, three weeks. And yeah. they released like a six, seven EP, but it's, it's all about R&B. It's about, you know, and to him, you know, you know, sad about you can't see his girl, you know, for six, seven days, what he's going to do, do when he sees her, you know? So I think every artist has that, you know, um, you know there's well they're affected by the quarantine different ways right yeah. yeah yeah and there must be people like him affected by it and so those people can actually consume it and listen to it as well but obviously there's some you know there's a track that i was supposed to come out like two weeks ago about let's go to the party tonight and like you can't release that you know yeah you know obviously but you know so no, no, i think some people want to have fun or like don't want to be reminded about being sad don't you think? Yeah, I mean, I think it really depends. You know, it's, it's, you have to be sensitive. I think Becky said something important, which is like the messaging, you know, like if you're putting it out there and you're saying, hey, listen, this because, you know, for all of you guys who are stuck at home and want to have a good time, and, you know, that's one thing. But I think we can't pretend like it's not happening. Right. You know, and you can't just drop a party track and pretend like everybody's going to be at the club pumping it because it's not happening. There are gonna, you know, you have to imagine that that club is now going to be consumed at home. You know, I mean, that song is going to be consumed at home. So mm -hmm. it's, and it's not going to be with a bunch of people, right? It's going to be with whoever's in their house. So it's, I mean, and like, I think it's like, that's what we were talking about like before, like it's interesting. And so Nir and I have a song, we have an artist that I signed to Nir and he's actually an R&B artist, Noah. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's funny because we've been looking for the right time to release something. And he has a song called Phone Sex. And so <laughs> we're like, there you go. it's the right time to drop Phone <laughs> Sex. <laughs> Amazing timing. <laughs> so yeah, so which uh, we're really excited. You know, Ben heard it too. He heard the song. Uh, uh, but 
but I think also it's one of these guys that he's self-contained. You know, he's in his house. He can play piano. He can play guitar. He knows how to record himself. You know, so he's ready to go. You know what I mean? And so I think, you know, with Rosalia, same thing. The second that all this stuff went down, she was like, I need equipment. I need to be able to work on my album. So she was, she was living with me. She actually just moved out two days ago to a house uh, down the street. But um, we built a studio in the house and she's working on her music every night. You know, she is, she records herself. So it's like, I think, um, same thing. We were going to drop a song, this big song with Travis Scott. And it was a big club song. And we hit the brakes because we're like, this is not, so that's why she dropped this other song that was a ballad because that's what she was feeling. But it's not a right thing. You know, Osuna just dropped this Mamacita song, which is amazing. And I think people are going to enjoy it. and They're going to have fun with it. Um, but I think it's the context, you know, like you guys were saying, like, I think that's important. I think like Bad Bunny's album, you know, what an amazing time to be a fan of his, right? Like if you're a fan of his, you just got the best quarantine gift ever because now you have all these songs to like really be able to consume and, and like, and live the album. So it, like the weekend, shit, the weekend's killing I quarantine. I think Noah planned it all, the whole thing. <laughs> the marketing ploy. No, it's yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> but I think, you know, to that point, it's like, you know, Benito has depth, you know, his songs have, you know, you know that he's going through things and it's not just, you know, there's angst and there's this and there's that. And it's like little Uzi Vert, like yeah. he's doing so well because it's like, again, he's not just like singing about, you know, like stupid shit. Like there's other things in there that have depth, you know? So that's what I think is really important right now, you know? Also to piggyback off of that, I think there's a level of like balance that we all are learning to navigate and i think with the balance it's like understanding the things that like doris brought up like the systemic changes that need to happen out of this that like moving oh, yeah. we can't accept any less than that like before the chat started we were discussing like rebecca and maria and i about how you know all of a sudden insulin is affordable like oh so it was possible all this time you guys just weren't allowing it to happen mm -hmm. so like now that we know the truth about those things like being aware of those things and, and figuring out how to move forward after this to make sure that those changes are instilled but like how depressing would it be to sit in front of cnn all day and just feel no, like I, I just i had to stop i had to yeah stop. and it's like, like there's a level of like nightmares you have to like you still have to find like sparks of joy through this like it's okay to consume music it's okay to dance around in your room it's okay to like you know get on a zoom call with just friends just for the sheer fact yeah. of like hanging out but be aware of the things that are happening and what needs to change when we are allowed out of the house like moving forward well it's interesting because um i was thinking about i was reflecting on something the other day like so i went to cuba when we did the rolling stones concert and my parents are cuban i had never been and, you know, they live a lot like this. Like, mm -hmm. they don't have toilet paper in a lot of places. They don't have, like, all the food. They don't have everything they need. You know, it's like, and they kind of have been living in quarantine. There's no parties. They don't go out, you know. And you go there, and everybody's so happy, you know. And everybody's singing, and they're happy, and they're making do with what they can. And they've decided to be happy, you know. It's, they're like, well, it's like, we're fucked, but, you know, let's just make the most of it. So everybody goes to Cuba, and they think, oh, Cuba's great. Everybody's great. It's like, no, they've decided to be happy in a really shitty situation. So I don't think there's any shame in being happy when you're quarantined in the situation is where it's a choice that we're making to see the positive and to find the beauty and to look for things that, that you know, help us feel better, you know, so. I think it's also just like an adjustment, just like adjustment like on a human level. Yeah. Like, I think most of us can agree that we're all bit like go 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 in the you know in the business that we work in and it's like it takes a lot for some of us to kind of like take a step back and like you know set boundaries between work life balance and I think this is a time to adjust and reset and figure out okay what does my life look like yeah. you know moving moving forward after this you know yeah I mean I would have never taken a break like this ever in my life mm -mm. ever so I'm like there's like I think, what I'm saying I don't there's think like any of us <laughs> Yeah, like so. This that's good too, you know. I guess I'm yeah. sleeping more than I have. It's right. a blessing in disguise. I think it's um like it's a blessing in disguise. It's it's a blessing and a curse. I mean, look again, looking at the glass half full, not half empty. Right, right, right. Um, it's forcing us to stop. Like I was saying earlier, like the demand for artists now is so different than it was ten, fifteen, twenty years ago. Like myself growing up watching artists right and all the effort that would go behind the glitz and the glamour that we would see at award shows and it was like these small encapsulated little moments that these artists were exposed were 
exposed to the fans and we viewed them as like superheroes you know what i mean like the only time we ever saw them was when they were on stage or when they were at xyz award show and whatever event um now it's it's 24 7 it's constant you know they want to not just see us on stage they want to know what we ate for breakfast they want to know about our families and our personal lives and our relationships and all these things and it's this constant give 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 and i i feel that as an artist i know because i've seen it what it does to my team because it takes mm. a village to produce to make these things happen to make them unique because it's a, a market where everybody's in now you know what I mean? There's all kinds of people getting involved. And so that demand to supply is just, it's overwhelming. And it's, it's, a, it's, it's one that, like you said, we would never stop because we love what we do. And that's, I think, a beautiful thing. But I know the effects of it that it can have on an individual is a lot. And um, to have this time to like kind of just pause and reflect and really think about what your future looks like, what you want to spend your time doing. Um, I remember when I was a kid, I don't know if anybody used to think the same way, but when you would wake up early for school and you'd be like, man, how cool would it be if I just could wake up and not have to do anything? Like, oh, it would be so great. Like if I didn't have to go to school or if nobody had to go to work, like that would be amazing. Now we're all here and I'm like, I take it back like I'm living it and now I'm like man like I don't know when the next time I get to walk onto a stage let alone vibe out and have a jam session with you know some of my favorite songwriters and producers and the studio and see my team and just have a coffee with them and and, and chill like that those things are things now that I think we look forward to and those were the little things for us, you know what I mean? So it's a good time, I think, to hit pause and, and reflect and say, man, time is is so precious. What am I gonna spend my time doing when this is all over? No, and the earth, you know, just seeing how the earth is like breathing, you know, like all the, you know, the images like here in Miami, like there's, it's crazy, like fish that you haven't seen in 50 years, dolphins are everywhere, manta rays are everywhere. The clarity and like you can see our neighbor in that. yeah like everything like it's like the earth is breathing like it needed it so bad like how else would this have ever happened if this didn't happen like you know how else would the earth have been given such like a break you know for us to see how much we like abuse it you know yeah. it's been yeah. pretty powerful to see all of that like i think that's the ozone like coal has shrunk like all these like legit facts about like how much you know, it's helping the planet we live on to, to give it a break. I think it's gonna probably make us rethink how we can how we go forward from here, you know, in our in our imprint and stuff. I think that's been really eye opening. Have any for of me. you have any of you thought about when things return back to normal, here is a list of things or here's a thing or two that you will not continue doing. Like, oh, I'm not gonna travel anymore. I'm just that's it, I'm never I'm never going anywhere. <laughs> Girl. <laughs> putting it in all my contracts i'm not going anywhere just like oh, when man. it comes to when it comes to like you as an artist you leading a team um traveling like in all the different areas with your families are there things that you think are you're thinking about that you're like no i'm not gonna bring that back into my life and i'm gonna be i realized i only need three outfits <laughs> Oh, yo, it's so true. I'm only this way. Just need hoodies. That's it. Dude, biker shorts are like the new way of life for me. I'm so excited. I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I just have a, a really random question, and I and it's probably well, it's definitely not. It's not on the oh, agenda, but um, are any of you guys watching Ancient Aliens? <laughs> I have not yet. I. I couldn't remember. You told me the other day, but I couldn't remember the show. So down the rabbit hole. It will, I think all of you need to watch it and then we need to reconvene. Because it's like, I'm so down the rabbit hole. So many things have been answered. That's so our I'm just gonna, homework. That's I won't, I won't, Latin I won't battle it. quarantine homework. I'm going to put it on my list of things to do. I swear to you, it's like a before and after in your life. I swear. Okay. I swear. Yeah. So what song would you play the aliens? You asked me the other day. I'm asking you. Oh. Oh no no! Obviously, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna play the Rosalia. She's like the fifth element, obviously. <laughs> Lex, what song would you play? 
the aliens. <laughs> hmm, calladita. <laughs> so they could understand what, what teenagers are going through in, in our society today. That's exactly what I'm playing. That's if you want to understand, here you go. <laughs> uh, it's, it's crazy. It's, you know, I think for us here, we've been taking it uh, as an approach of really learning, you know, and, and taking this time to give back so much of the knowledge that we've acquired uh, by doing things like this. Uh, whether it's with our producers or our artists. Um, and also, I, I think it, it, it pulled this, this false sense of security that I think we, you know, we all live every day with this sense that nothing's gonna happen, everything's good. We live in the US or, you know, we're, we're protected. And, and it shows you how, how quickly things can turn the other way. So I think for us, it's been really interesting, not only as, as a manager, as a, as a business, and, you know, we've been, and with Tiny to analyze overall kind of every aspect of our lives from our family life like you know everybody's been talking here about you know what's really important with our time um because like all of a sudden we went from traveling every day never seeing anybody i mean i i live in the same city as my mother and i think i've i see her like three times a year so it's been great to like re kind of revisit the way format that my life was formatted and our lives are formatted and say okay what's what's really important because when the time comes and we don't know when that time is, what are we going to value? So, you know, we've been doing a lot of that. And, and, um, and also because we have businesses outside of the music um, aspect of things, being able to see the restaurants and the gaming and, and also understand the struggles of every single part of that and, and, you know, the stresses of that as well of like what people are going through, you know, what our bartenders are going through when they were making X amount a month and all of a sudden zero the next month and how we adjust as a business to make sure culturally we're supportive to them and we're supportive to our staff. And uh, it's, it's been really an interesting time for us. Um, it's been honestly a learning lesson. And I, I spend most of my time just trying to find new things that I can learn, um, you know, being on calls like this, on conversations like this, where like to just get the mind going. And we've been doing the same thing for every single one of our clients, like, you know, going through every single aspect that we can, of not just their music business life, but their personal life, their finances, like, how to adjust, how to make smarter investments, how to be secure for the future, and also how to give back. Like now that we have this, this open opportunity to really see what the world's going through, you know, how are we more effective as, as vehicles for the message that, that we want to carry? Because I think that's the most important thing that artists, and we all have, right? We, we have influence, which I, I think, um, you know, you could be extremely financially successful in other businesses, but our particular business gives us a sense, uh, an, opp an opportunity to truly, truly uh, be of influence to so many people. So I think in this crisis, it allows us to see like, what are some of the weak points? What are some of the things that we can utilize more, not only through music, but through, you know, our, our organizations, our businesses on how to operate and create so much more opportunity for people um, to kind of look at themselves in the mirror and say, you know, how do we improve, I think, overall our world? And so that's kind of what's been going on here. And, and um, you know, it's, a, it's an interesting time. It's a lot of going on. But at the same time, I think it's, it's been such a blessing. I mean, I can't remember the last time I spent this amount of time being able to digest knowledge and give it and, and really look at, at everything that's going on. So, I mean, I, I never used to watch the news or watch what's going on in the world. It was like in my own world. And even being able to open up myself to understand what is going on and what other people are feeling has it's been, it's been incredibly insightful. AJ, you haven't spoken once. I'm just over here taking notes and listening from all these legends in this, in this Zoom. Thank you for this opportunity of being here. And I think on my end, on the YouTube end, we've been checking in with our partners and just, you know, showing sympathy and love and understanding that we're all going through mixed emotions, high, high, low, lows, and being there for them and seeing how we can help them. Whether they're releasing a single, whether they're deciding to pull back, how can we be there for our artists? We have this um, Stay Home With Me campaign, Quédate En Casa Conmigo, where we're sending out comms and information for live streams that, you know, once they become video on demand, they can monetize. We've had some amazing live streams, of course. Latin is a new pop culture throughout our, our different um, markets like Brazil with millions of peak concurrence 
but I think now more than ever is like adapting and adjusting to the time and finding that fifth uh, piece of a four-legged chair and how can we be there for people? How can we do more of this? Saludos a todo el mundo que está en el chat con nosotros, everyone that is here with us. Thank you for being a part of this amazing panel and how we can empower each other. How can we just check in and say, how are you doing? How do you feel? How can we serve you? I think now more than ever, we just have to show the human side and continue to push mm -hmm. music and protect our culture because like I always say, Latin is the new pop culture. So, um, you know, Drops, oh, mic. mic drop, I'm done here. Yeah, I was gonna say, boom. <laughs> boom, drops mic, I'm done. No, say, and just, it's, it's, it's great that you say everything that you're saying because I completely agree and I'm sure like being one of the platforms um, right now that the demand is probably very high because you are one of the only, right? Alongside a lot of all of the other, you know, music streaming platforms, um, people are really listening now. They're really watching now. Before it was just for if I had time or just to play music in the background, but now this is what people, this is all we got. You know what I mean? I know for me as an artist to know that we have the support from, you know, places like you guys to say, hey, you know, we, we want to be part of that campaign or we want to connect or how do we amplify this? How do we bring concerts to people's homes? How do we just connect? How do we, it's, I don't know, kind of reinvent ourselves in, in these situations and um, acknowledge to that, you know, there are some, you know, people who do have, uh, I guess, I don't want to say like a given upper hand because we've all worked very hard to get to where we are, but there are people who are less fortunate and, and shining a light, light upon that, you know what I mean? Like um, how Steph was saying earlier and, and Doris was saying earlier about people who aren't as lucky. Um, think of, it's funny you had mentioned like immigrants in, in the United States and how like they're not protected. And that was something that I was actually speaking about yesterday. And then on top of that, you think of students, right? Kids who don't have access to things that all of a sudden they are doing at-home studies. And most of these kids don't even have access to the internet. They don't, they used to go to McDonald's or Starbucks where there was free Wi-Fi to be able to get an assignment done or a project done. And now everything's kind of being taken away from them. And one of the only things that we have as artists to connect that's left is you guys, you know what I mean? You guys are the bridge, the connecting piece. So like shout outs to you guys and everybody who works and all those platforms that allow us to do what we need to do um, in order to, to be there for people and to shine a light upon these things. I mean, I haven't done one at home performance. Everything that I've done really has right. been more like, where can I find information? Where can we donate to? What can I educate myself on? Because right now I'm kind of in a place as an artist where like music kind of feels a little bit like it doesn't have the same feeling. It doesn't, you know what I mean? It's a, it's also, uh, and adding to that, Becky, it's also a beautiful moment where, um, shout out to Tuma Bas, I think he mentioned this in one of the panels. It's like an equal opportunity where you can get everyone's attention at the same time, where up and coming artists can probably get the same attention or real estate as any other artist. And it's really all about content. Content is king, marketing is queen, perception is checkmate. Now more than ever, it's an equal opportunity for everybody. But it's so beautiful because like right now you can go on YouTube and you can search on how to do things, how to work on something new. And I heard a beautiful story that someone figured out how to filter ventilators, especially during these times and saved over like 500 people in, in a building just through YouTube. So, you know, especially in this business with you legends here, this is 90% business, 10% music. Now more than ever, it's, it's important for everyone to educate themselves, stay positive and, you know, look at the silver lining through this. And then, and then one of the things like, you know, um, what you guys were talking about in terms of whether it's immigrants or, or you know, kids who, who don't have access at home to just whether it's food, you know, lunch, things along those lines. You know, I think one of the biggest misperceptions about this entire event is that this thing is a great equalizer. And, um, and this is, is the biggest light shown on disparity in this country, hands down right now. So where I think, you know, years ago we had the event of like Hurricane Katrina, and I think that was people's, a lot of people first time seeing how um, a lot of black people were living in, in the South. And, um, and now, no, you, you're seeing 
the the hu a huge level of disparity. Like I think in Philly, they just announced, I think it's 70% of the people who died from COVID so far were black and black people are only 30% of the population in the city, right? So mm -hmm. th these are people that are documented, people that can go into hospitals, people that are not flying under the radar. Imagine other, other populations. So like that, that's the part where, um, you know, I'm just hoping that the, the coming out of this, that's one of the things in terms of being able to fix that can actually, uh, as a country, we can work on, on, on really fixing. Uh, no, to enjoy point. Oh, sorry, Becky. No, 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 go ahead. Um, just about the fact that like the people that have been cast in the shadows are now being brought to light, right? Where it's like you are now thinking of your back of house workers in every restaurant that you've ever enjoyed and you think of where are they now? How are they feeding their families now? What can we do in order to step up for them? So the fact that Becky, that you're reaching out to see where can I find this information and at least utilize my platform in order to redirect people's attention to where it should be, like it where we're thinking now how are people are going to be paying their rent how can we help in that moment in order to to mobilize that revolution we think of you know this is the line of work that we do in order to um utilize this this amazing access to resources that we have in order to help our communities now this is a moment that we can step up and think of just even how change has been mobilized in the past with like mlk like that that was a concert that was a literal concert to bring people together to mobilize change. So like, how can we now flash forward into 2020, be able to see that as the example to set now, like this is the part that we get to like step up or we, we're all in our worlds. We're all thinking about release strategies and our next tour budget and how this person is giving us hassle and whatever. And then we can't even put our heads up to see how we're all hurting. So how can we right. now? Well, and it's interesting. It's interesting because I grew up in a household where the 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 way my parents raised me is we treat others. You know, we we good people. We believe in good people. We treat others the way we want to be treated with respect, with love, um, and with care and with consideration. And in our household, you know, my parents always told me politics and religion will forever divide people. Um, so just know that there's 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 gonna be people who believe in one thing and you might believe in another and that's just going to be life but the truth is is what's never wrong is heart heart is never wrong and i i grew up in inglewood i'm you know, like i said mexican american and in inglewood it's an african american community and a latino community and that's about it like growing up in in inglewood that's what it was and and that was my reality and that's where i draw a lot of my inspiration and that's what is i think this is causing me to really take me back to my roots and really see um, because I'm seeing it firsthand. Like I still live in Inglewood. Like I, I didn't leave. Like I'm still here. And for me to see, you know, what our local grocery stores look like right now, you know, in times like these and how they're the access for people. And, and more than anything, like before this was even happening in our communities, the, the access to education isn't the same. So you have a lot of minority communities not being educated about their own health in the right ways. You know, my grandparents, they, they didn't, they thought once they got a doctor, they had, if they didn't like that doctor, they still had to stay with that doctor. Like they didn't know that, hey, if something feels uncomfortable, if something's not right, you speak up, you ask questions, you can ask to be, you know, moved, you can, it's, it's about educating one another, you know what I mean? And I know for myself, like coming from the community that I grew up in, like that's, that's the sad part is that this is all they know they don't know any different you know i saw and now with social media too it's so easy um because you know what you were saying actually about you know the 70 percent of the the deaths of, of covid19 were people who are african-american it's crazy because i was seeing on social media somebody saying oh well if you're african-american you can't get covid19 and then that goes viral and then all you have all this youth out there running around reckless thinking, hey, I'm good, I'm good. And no, you're not good. You're, you're not protected. They're not protecting you. You got to protect yourself. And it's something that I know coming from minority communities, we're constantly like, it's this constant thing where you have to just know, like no one's looking out for you. So you got to look out for yourself and you got to look out 
for for each other so what are we doing to educate one another and see each other and see one another's realities and say hey this is wrong here or this is not okay here you know um that's for sure something i think that's been weighing on me a lot these days as far as what do i lend my voice to because the amount of opportunities that have come through the pipeline of this this charity wants this and this da -da -da this and this da -da -da this and it's like it's overwhelming as an artist. You want to do everything. You want you want to. The world is hurting right now, but the truth is, is we're only one little. I'm, I know I'm one tiny little person. I'm only five foot tall, and I'm I'm little. I'm like a little chihuahua over here. I I can only do so much at once. I can only spread myself so thin, and I want to make sure that what I do use my voice for is something that people see is authentic and is genuine, you know? And that's why even I released a song today and I, I we decided to tell my team, I said, I'm not releasing anything unless we're giving back to the ones in need. So we did a collaboration where we're gonna be donating all the proceeds of a limited edition t-shirt that goes to my fans um, to the Los Angeles Unified School District because I myself was a student of the Los Angeles Unified School District. And if you see the numbers, we have 700,000 students, 80% of those kids live in poverty. 80% 80, 80 of those kids, almost 90% of those kids are kids from minority communities. So when you think about it like that, you're just like, yo, like I gotta help, like that was me. I am still them. I came from, I'm still here. What do I do? And I felt like that was like my first move, you know? And, and if I could give any advice to anybody, just like follow your heart. Like really, really listen to, to what your gut is telling you right now and your heart is telling you right now. Because to me, heart can never be wrong. That's, that's just one thing I know for a fact. I love that. I think you're right. I think whatever you support though, I mean, anybody, it has to be sincere. You know, it has to be something that speaks to you and that matters to you. And you can't do everything. You know, you should just do the things that, that are, you know, are really important to you personally. That's what I think. Like your heart can never, go, you know, it can never go wrong, like you said. And I think to, I think to Becky's point about like how information just spreads so rapidly, especially right now, because we are on our phones more than regular. We are tied to our computers more than regular. It's like, how do we as people in this industry who have access to platforms like youtube like dsps in a way that other people don't to inform people it's like why why is this pandemic affecting people of color like disproportionately because they're the ones that have to go and work these essential jobs why because they have to pay their rent why because the government won't freeze rent so like all those things it's like people don't understand that that's why it's affecting people of color disproportionately it's not because Latino or, or African American people are more susceptible to diabetes. Like it's none of that. It's because they have to go and be out and about every day and they have to pay their bills because they won't do anything about covering their bills and they have kids to feed. They have things to do. Like they have and I feel like when we have a platform like this and we want to put out music, it's like how do we inform those conversations as well? Because if something like like black people can't get COVID-19 spreads like wildfire, we have to be, we have to counter that. Like we have to spread information that is going to inform change moving forward. You know what I mean? 100%. I also think we have to collect and convince allies. And, you know, like me speaking as a Asian American woman who immigrated to the United States in 1992 in the cultural sub, in the cultural context of the Rodney King trials and the early riots, like me growing up here, like I, I, I saw what was happening in immigrant communities in like black and brown communities and like the tensions and the, and the fear and um, just like the, the negative, the negativity that, you know, stayed for decades. And I think that like that left an imprint on me, especially as I like work with Troy and Jay and Steph and Maria and You had to think we were crazy though, coming to America during the Rodney King riots. I mean, I got here and it was like, hello. <laughs> and, you know, of course, like my 30 year old parents and that's like my age now, I look back and I'm like, I cannot believe, and I'm sure this is like a story of many of you on the call, cannot believe what they put themselves through to just give us a better life. And, you know, now that I'm grown and we're grown and we have this influence and access and power, you know, how can we make sure to build allies that even if they're not of the black or brown communities, how can we like use 
every ounce of our effort and energy to to like partner up and also shed light on those areas that you don't have to be just black or brown to speak up on these issues like it's really all of our it's all of our duties that's actually a good segue into some of the questions i want to make sure to get to today because we have a love a lovely group of audience members that have just posted over like 60 questions um throughout the chat but one of the questions related to what you were saying susie was latinx in the music business feels like one of the most underrepresented demographics here in the u.s what kind of programs do you think could help educate the youth in Latinx communities of opportunities in the industry besides being an artist? Can I? So, this is all Doris written all over it. Yeah, it's like Doris. <laughs> um, so I went to school to be a teacher before the music industry decided to, to take me in its current. Um, and I think, so this month, actually, um, USC, their architecture school was supposed to do uh, the College of Architecture was supposed to do this like floating school on MacArthur Park Lake. And if you are from LA, you know that that whole area of MacArthur Park is strictly like minority communities. You see underrepresented communities, you see immigrant workers every single day community. And what they were going to set up is to be able to have like these daily classes from folks in the industry, like um, folks like Ugly Primo, who did an incredible job with all the Bad Bunny work. Like he was gonna do a screen printing class for these kids and be able to share his story and tell his experience. Like he's a kid from the IE. We both went to a Cal State and now we get to like high five each other when we see each other in these spaces together. Like our our now realities were dreams for us when we were kids, you know, to see our parents work as janitors or as um dishwashers or back of house restaurant workers. Like this wasn't this was a privilege. This was a uh, such a, a a dream to even think that this could be a career for us because we didn't see our representation in there. So to host those kinds of spaces, to be able to actually share mentorship, to be able to actually highlight people, to be like, I'm going to empower you because it's important for us to continue to be in this business, to make space and hold space for each other. Like I, I met Steph just because of shows and I was like, just hang out at our office. Like if this like turns into a thing, then it turns into a thing. And then she went from people and then now she's here and we got to do the La Doña deal together with human resources and boom, that's how it works. As long as we keep alley-ooping each other into these spaces, if we, if we teach each other. And I think like, at least I saw a, a big shift in how this industry works and where, you know, people used to afford information like like wolves. Like we're gonna we're gonna keep this for ourselves. Where I think now I just see this revolution of women empowering women, thrusting each other into these spaces, connecting people, making sure that they're in the room, making sure that they're heard more of that. <laughs> more of actually making sure that we get into these spaces and continue to be in these spaces. Completely. And to piggyback off of that really quick, um, I remember seeing a piece on Tyler Perry and he said something amazing that really, even for me, I took and I was like, yo, this is very inspiring even for me in, in the world that I work in. And as a, as a, as a Latin woman in, in the music industry, especially as an artist, like we're constantly being threatened uh, with there's only one seat at the table. There's only one seat at the table. So of course, how are we all not gonna look at each other like, mm, well, who's gonna get to it first? Well, I deserve, I deserve that seat at the table. Well, I do too. And it's this thing where when, when Tyler Perry said, this whole time we've been fighting each other for this one seat at the table that they claim is the best table ever when we could have just already made our own. And that's what he did and that's why he has this studio and he's producing all these films and he's taking on these young producers and these directors and these actors and creating a movement and to me like i mean you can ask ben the amount of times i've sat in rooms and they're like well you shouldn't simpiana is like the greatest example of it i was told so many times by so many people don't do it with anybody else if you think it's such a hit why are you gonna go why are you gonna share the song why and I was like, because we, there's a lot of hit songs in history, right? There's a hit song, it comes and it goes. Let's talk about a moment in history that's never happened before. 
let's do something bigger let's come together like I I grew up watching people like Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera right and I thought they were dope and I thought they were cool pop stars and whatever and as you get older you're like hmm I wonder like what would have happened if like Britney and Christina did like a headlining tour together how dope that would have been or if they did like a collab album and like how many records that would have broke because a powerhouse here and a powerhouse here coming together I mean it's lights out right but they never did it and I wonder why well because we're territory right to record labels well she belongs here and she belongs here and we can't cross contaminate because then contracts and business and blah 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 all that stuff and then they get into who looks better who has a better body who looks prettier who has prettier hair all those things it's just it's so crazy that all this time we we had to go through those things right to then realize that we are so much, like I would say, juntos somos más. We are so much more together. And that's why people fear that. People are threatened by that. And I think there's such beauty in that power that we should be utilizing that more. Like I feel empowered when I can share the stage. I feel empowered. I feel secure in what I bring to the table enough to say, hey, you dope chick, who has flow, who's incredible, you come, let's do this together. What are your ideas? I love that. Let's do it. Instead of being like, hmm, I want this all to myself. That kind, you, it only gets you so far. And I feel like if we all continue this, this beautiful power that we've tapped into, it, we're bound to continue to break boxes that we're constantly put in and and create such amazingness with that exactly. It's just, it's a beautiful thing that we can unite and literally like, I mean, we, we've made history. Look at Latinos and we love sharing. Our culture, I know we love sharing. Where one eats in my family, a hundred can eat. Where one sleeps in my family, a hundred can sleep. That's how we are. We love giving. And and I think now that we've taken that to the masses, that's why Latin music is pop music now. That's why it's the, the hottest, dopest thing, because we love it. We we want people to enjoy it just as much as we do. Totally. Great. Um, I want to, uh, everyone, lovely answers. Uh, I want to get to another question here from anonymous attendee. Um, what's the next step in the Latin industry overall? And what are some markets to look at in the Latin side if you're fully independent? The next step is what Noah just did. Change the game. <laughs> Congrats, by the way. That album is fire. Thank you, appreciate it, appreciate it. Someone's next, oh, there's always someone next. I guess I have okay, a question. Amir, you answer that. You're the man on this. So wait, can you repeat the question, please? You kind of got cut out. I'll get one second. Let me find it. Uh, question is, what's the next step for the Latin industry overall? And what are some markets to look at on the Latin side if you're truly in, uh, fully independent? I think overall what, what I'm seeing, um, this, the current circumstances, uh, actually some exciting times where uh, music is just a tendencies and influences mm -hmm. and um, where music is coming from, it's, it's going to shift dramatically. Um, you know, we're so used to having like Puerto Rico and Medellin as, as these, these, um, these hubs of, um, of music. And now you're seeing amazing artist propositions coming from all across uh, the region. Um, and it's, it's exciting time. So I think actually nobody knows what's going next for Latin music. And I think we're in a process of, of, you know, writing a, a brand new chapter. And that to me is exciting. Um, I think it, it happened, the last wave was maybe, you know, seven years ago when it, you know, the music changed and kind of there was a lane formed and, and all these amazing artists came through it. Uh, now it's time for a new generation. So it, it's being written as we speak. Um, and um, I mean, there's room for so many artists and so many, uh, so many players. It's, you know, there's, it's definitely, Feel, it feels more democratic, you know. Um, it has made people like me in a position that I am, you know, more humble and and uh, really uh, have an appreciation to what what things that like that what Noah does and what Lex does, and you know, and, uh, in, interacting very closely, and uh, you know, keeping an ear to the ground and and, and learning. You know, it's it's learning a lot. Um, as far as as markets, I. I, I 
you know, the, the beautiful thing, the beautiful thing about Latin America is that it's like it's like a it's a roadmap, um, and there's different points uh, or different paths that you can that you can take. Um, so I I think it really it, it depends on I guess you can look at yourself as an artist and, and understand who you are, and you know what what I mean where are your roots where do they belong to is it is it to a particular country culture and you just kind of start drawing those those um, kind of logical um, steps. Um, I mean, if you're a Colombian artist, uh, and we, you know, we, we have those cases where, you know, we're based in the U.S. here in a scope, but we work with artists from all over the region. And artists who uh, are either, let's say, Colombian um, from a Colombian heritage, but born here, and you know, Colombia is a very natural market for them. So we kind of go back to Colombia and build a story there. Um, we actually, well. You know, with uh, with Neon Sixteen, we have uh, we have uh, an artist who's from Colombia, and, and Colombia is a very important market to start, uh, you know, focusing on. But every artist has his own uh, his own story, and um, you know. So uh, the beautiful thing is that you know you have a plethora of markets that you can you can look at, and it's just uh, kind of understanding who you are, and you know, taking it from there. Also, to try to, to, pay, to piggyback off uh, a little bit of what he said, I think it's. You know, nobody knows what the future holds for, for the business, but what I would say is you are, artists are having more freedom. I think in, in Latin music, just like it's happened in so many other styles of music, for many years they had like a boundaries of what you could say or do or what was expected from your image or what was expected from the box that was called being a Latin artist or having a Latin hit. Mm -hmm. And as, you know, Noah and Bunny have proven and Jose and, you know, Rebecca and, and Rosalia, I think there's way there's just so much freedom now to just express your artistry however you see fit and it's still considered Latin. It's not anymore that it has to have, you know, danced in the club or you know, or, or have some sort of a like organic dance instrument for you to to, to be considered Latin. Um, it, it's really become about just Latin artists expressing everything that they're going through in whatever way they have. So I think we're gonna to continue to see that freedom expand more as artists like Rosalie and Bonnie, like Bob and so many others, Becky. Everybody's continues to break the boundaries of what was um, the standard in Latin music. And, and I think you're gonna see that because it, it, the world has opened up. Things that might've been um, the same in the American market because everybody has already done it, it's things that are still to be accomplished by the Latin market. I mean, playing at the Super Bowl that's a huge accomplishment. And, and it was something that was, hadn't been done yet in that way, in that presentation, an all Latin you know, cast of artists. Um, and I think you're going to continue to see that, you know, what Baldwin, every time he talks about, about Jay and wanting to be the first billionaire, like there's so much more to accomplish now that the boundaries are no longer there. And I think if you're an artist, doesn't matter what territory you're from, you have the freedom to now get global attention um, and you're seeing territories that would, would have normally not been anywhere near in the major scale of, of Latin music, like Argentina and Chile and, and you know, even Central America. You're, you're seeing a lot of territories open up and find their own stars, find their own sound, um, and find a way to not only fit in the ecosystem, but break through to the global ecosystem. And I mean, also to that point, I think, you know, the way that globalization globalization and social media is working for kids today i think kids want to see themselves reflected in artists that you know look like them who don't just make you know quote unquote traditionally what is known as latin music like that's why we have cuco that's why we have omar apollo now that's why we have those are latin artists they make funk they make psychedelic rock they make things that are outside of the like sonic scope of what latin is but those are really latin artists just on an identity basis. And I think there's a lot of Latin kids and I think, I forgot what the percentage was, but I think the majority of the US population is minorities, like kids, like in terms of like kids that are 18 this year, the majority of, of kids is minorities. And so that's gonna shift a lot of things. Like brown, brown kids wanna see themselves reflected in pop music, in you know funk music and rock music and in a really, really big way. And that's that I think is what's gonna expand the, the Latin narrative, because the Latin narrative outside of music looks and sounds like a lot of different things. Like, it doesn't just sound like one thing. Like a Mexican narrative, a Mexican American narrative, like a Colombian narrative. They all are very different, and I think that we're going to start to see that reflected in the music moving forward. 
Um, yeah, I mean, I definitely what, think what that I like, the, that, sorry. What I love, so real quick, what I love about that is that it allows for the consumer and for anyone on the other side to fall in love with the art or just what it is, the art. And, and then the double click can be that artist like representing their identity of where they're from, that it might be different from where another artist is from. So yeah, Rebecca, what were you gonna say? Uh, well, my dogs are barking right now. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> they are so cute. I was gonna say, no, I was just gonna say that I think the most important thing in any language is, sorry, is, um, is being authentic. Yeah. You know, I think that's, that's why you see somebody like, you know, Billie Eilish, you know, like she's connecting because it feels like she's really living that moment. And like, she's, it's really, she's being very genuine to who she is. That's what I, that's why I think Bad Bunny, Bad Bunny connects so much. I think people know it's not a persona. It's like, you know, like it's, it feels really authentic. All his music, Rosalia, the same thing, you know, Becky, it's like, you, you can't fake it. And people, fans are so smart right now. They have so much information and they call you out on everything. You know, so if you're faking it, if you're copying somebody, if you're not being authentic, if you're not really diving deep inside to figure out what is that, what is it that you, that makes you unique, you know, I don't, I don't think it's going to be easy for you right now. I think you really have to be authentic. I think there's, it's, a, we're going to enter a no bullshit era. That's what I feel like. I think to add on to all your excellent points too, just like as a, you know, as a young professional or as like music industry professional, you think representation also matters within like those marketing rooms and, you know, those positions or recruiting budgets and everything like that. Um, something Susie said to me uh, a while ago that has always really resonated with me um, about like the culture of human resources is like, or Q&A as a whole, is that we're not trying to get hire people to be in line with our culture. We're trying to hire people to like expand on it. And something like, when I was entering into music, I remember going to networking events or going to like shows and I would say bye to every single person before I left because that's what I thought you were supposed to do. You know, just make sure you say hi to everyone and you say bye to everyone before you leave. And I remember some people being like, you don't need to say bye to everyone before you go. Like that's not, you don't need to do that. And I'm just like, no, man, this is the way. That's who I you learned. are. Yeah, that's yeah. that you have to bring yourself in those little moments and that will give you strength. And I think you know, sometimes too, like for those, you know, wanting to enter the music industry um, as a young professional, as well as like, you know, I remember getting, I would apply for jobs and they'd be like, oh, do you want to, I know you apply for this job, but there's an opening in our Latin music team, if you're interested at all. And I was like, mm -hmm. I wanted to apply for this one. And it's totally fine to have, you know, that type of representation and everything. But you know, I think I would encourage everyone, don't let anyone put you in boxes, like echoing mm. Becky's point, like you want to be the best metal Latino executive or anything like that, like you do it. And I think that's something my mom always told me when she immigrated to this country that her mother told her was, I don't care what you do, but if you want to be the ice cream man, you're going to be the best ice cream man there ever was. Um, mm -hmm. So just wanted to leave off that's with that. Great. But um. Something I do want to close out this panel because I know we're already over time because it wouldn't be a Latino panel if we weren't all late. Um, and uh, first off, just thank you to all the panelists and just thank you to audience members. I'm going to post in the chat once again our Slack group and our email list. Um, to close it out properly, I do want to hand it over to Jay. Yeah, so I, yeah, I just wanted to um, thank everyone. Ben, specifically, thank you, man. Like when we started this, we wanted this to be a reflection of you know, people who were like-minded. And this group is certainly a reflection of you and, and how much love and respect you have in the community. Cause you know, this panel was great, man. So really a lot of thanks to you and um, for pulling this together and everybody for joining us. And to my resident uh, head of Latin, Steph, gang gang, thank you very much. Appreciate, you know, you, your help. And thank you guys. Well. Um, so thank all of you guys. Ancient aliens. Tune in. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>